artist today i'm sharing with you this process video using mixed media if you're new here hi welcome my name is Rit. i'm an intuitive color-led artist based in austria in europe and on my channel i share my artsy adventures so first before i get to talking about this particular uh, painting process which was very very enjoyable i want to let you know that my watercolor mixing ebook it's a digital book is once again available on my website so i i got a lot of questions uh, because i changed platforms and for a while for a few months it wasn't available so it is available again and it is a fantastic resource to help you know what your watercolors can do um, to inspire you or if you need a hand adding some colors to your palette this will really help you because i especially use granulating colors separating colors that i haven't seen in any other mixing book so if you want a link to that book then leave a comment and write mix and i will give you the direct link it will also be linked in the uh, video description so let's get to this process before uh, i talk about some other things i want to tell you but the reason i was showing you a close-up of my gouache palette is just to let you see how it looks after quite a few months of putting gouache paint in a palette now i have to say I have been incorporating more gouache to my paintings and now I really enjoy using watercolors and gouache. Uh, I like both of them and I don't really want to be exclusive anymore. Uh, but the thing with gouache is that I will say that it is probably best to use squeezed fresh from the tube. However, that really doesn't work with my process and i just when i have time to paint i just want to start painting i don't want to start squeezing out paint and so i use my gouache in a palette uh, it works fine the palette that i have is i think it's like you know tight like sealed tight uh, with some rubber bands around the top of it um, but it's best to kind of spray it with water before you close it still i sometimes forget and now after a few months some of the paints are quite crumbling and falling out i should probably just set up a new palette um, and maybe add a little bit less paint to the wells so that once in a while every few months i can just clear it out uh, and and squeeze out some fresh gouache uh, it does get a little bit annoying when they get very crumbly and start moving around in your palette also the texture can be a bit grainy so i can't recommend and say this is the best way to use gouache but it is kind of the only way that works for me so um, i just wanted to share that with you as usual i start my process with neo color one mostly one because they are water resistant and i like the way that they resist the watercolors that i will add on top and i also like that these initial sketches show in the final piece my style is very kind of messy sketchy i love that space between a sketch and a painting uh, so that's kind of where i live um, and a part of that is having these sketchy lines uh, from the beginning and then also having them visible in the finished piece. This was very much inspired by the Greek islands, my travels to the Greek islands. And that brings me to the second thing I wanted to talk about, which is that I would really love to, hopefully uh, I can do that, I would really love to create um, a couple of mini classes before the summer online classes <laughs> that will be you know in my online school not an in-person class the reason i'm saying that is because i posted a poll uh, on my community tab on youtube and i think i wasn't really clear so what i mean is a mini class inspired by certain places or it might be more project based so for example like filling a little sketchbook for example uh, or maybe one like that and one like the other i haven't really decided but 
uh, right now I only have on like in my school kind of larger courses and I really want to offer uh, something that is a little bit less intense and also at a lower price point so probably it'll be priced at like $25 um, and it'll be like a couple of hours of video content now I posted the poll with a few places that I love and would love to sketch and paint and the winners <laughs> were Greece or or and uh, France in specifically the French Riviera and Provence these are areas that I've been to and I absolutely love and I find them very inspiring and so I'll probably choose one of these two for the class um, maybe I'll post a new poll with a little bit more clarification but I would love your feedback in the comments if you would be interested in just such a course if you would take such a course and um, if you would then which location to be explored in an online course <laughs> sadly <laughs> we won't be doing this course in the greek islands in in france uh, maybe in the future who knows but what i mean is an online course sketching these places inspired by these places so let me know greece or french riviera and provence um, and yeah i think this is all the house cleaning house house maintenance <laughs> uh, things I wanted to talk about so let's get back into the painting uh, I will list all of the supplies that I used below um, including this brush which I always get questions about this is my magic wand I love this brush it is lovely to handle and you can go back to old videos on my channel and you'll see me still using it because I just I love it um, with gouache I probably prefer flatter brushes uh, just because I prefer a thicker application of gouache in contrast to watercolors but for watercolors that uh, brush which is by Tracy Lebenzon it's a handmade brush is really perfection and yeah I will list the details below so if you want to grab one treat yourself uh, I highly recommend it and you'll find all the details below I also have uh, a new addition to my website uh, my favorite art supplies so if you're interested in that I will also leave a link to that below I always 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 get questions about supplies this is one of the things that people are most interested about and I think because there is so much out there uh, it really helps to have guidance and you know whenever I want to buy a new art supply I always check if my favorite people on YouTube have tried it and what they say uh, but isn't it is important to keep in mind that you know when it comes to quality sure there are like objective things but when it comes to art supplies a lot of the opinions you will hear really depend on personal preference and I always say that that you know you can have a product that is amazing that is really really high quality but still it wouldn't work for me and I have a few videos dedicated to my regrets and splurges uh, and things that are indeed beautiful and excellent but just didn't work for me so a lot of my painting process these days is based on the rainbow method which is a strategy that I developed to help me create art when I need it the most because I paint as a way to relax as therapy um, it's my hobby it's my passion but it's also my self-care and what happened in recent months was that I needed to paint more than ever but I was also feeling so down and so uninspired and not creative um, and so I developed certain strategies that would help me paint so that I could enjoy the effects 
and influence it had on my well-being, uh, but, you know, without the struggle. And so the main strategy that I came up with, I call it the rainbow method. And in a nutshell, I have a whole course dedicated to it and I go into um, a lot of detail and there's a lot of techniques in that course. But in a nutshell, when I'm stuck, I have other strategies, but when I'm stuck, this is my crutch, my go-to, the rainbow method, which is basically just using color um, in the order that it is on the color wheel. Also, depending on your personal preferences. So, for example, I don't really use um, red or black or brown in my work, but I have like my favorite colors. And whenever I get stuck, I just kind of go to that place, start with one color, and then I follow the color wheel. Uh, it's all very flexible and very adjustable, but that is the gist of it. And it has really helped me make more art in the last months than I have ever made and more art that I like. Not every piece I'm totally in love with, but because of the focus on color, I introduced myself as an intuitive color-led artist and that is 100% true. What attracts me to my own art and to other people's art um, is the colors. There's also more to it, right? There's, you know, like brushwork and, and hand and sketchy lines and texture and all kinds of things but color is always the first thing that will draw me in and you know I can look at wonderful paintings with high skill or beautiful texture beautiful composition but if the colors don't grab me I'm not gonna like that piece um, whereas I find that if the colors appeal to me I'm much more open to you know different styles um, and different subjects and yeah it's always the yummy colors and so this is what I use when I paint and again especially when I am uninspired so I let that first layer of watercolors dry and I usually only do two layers of watercolor maximum uh, the reason is that I have found that to keep that kind of fresh sketchy look of these like puddles of watercolor i mean you can see it very clearly on the screen i hope what i'm talking about right it's just like these these little puddles of watercolor to keep it looking really fresh i have to know when to stop and not overwork my painting and another thing that i learned besides the stopping is to use mixed media. And so that's why I love using the Neo Colors, the wax pastels to start my paintings because they act as like placeholders and then I don't get too crazy with the watercolors. <laughs> and then as final touches or like the last layer of my painting is usually going to be with pencils because with pencils, I can get a level of detail and an ease of adding sketches that I can't really get with watercolors or that I would need, you know, like a very, very detailed brush and very high control of pigment to water ratio to get that look. But I also just really like sketchy pencil lines. Again, that was, that's what draws me in many times to works. It's like these textured scribbles, sketchy lines. I really love that in my art and also in other people's art. So using pencils and using wax pastels has really allowed me to create paintings that I enjoy making and that I also love the result. They have that very I feel like fun, whimsical look to them and I don't have to focus so much on being careful not to overwork my paintings. So you can see that I have here different elements, again, all inspired by the Greek islands and summers in the Greek islands. We have like the blue domes, they're very famous for Greece. We have some sun umbrellas, some, what are they called, windmills. Um, there are some famous ones in Mykonos 
and yeah everything kind of comes together with the sun and turquoise platters that symbolize or suggest the sea uh, in this very very colorful piece and um, I've also been really enjoying adding some pops of neon to my paintings um, I love using neon with acrylics with watercolors not always but I have found recently that I like to add a few scribbles with some neon pencils and my favorites are from Holbein they have the luminous red that is like that neon red I love neon red I don't really love neon orange or neon yellow or neon green <laughs> but I love the pinks the violets and the reds especially the reds for some reason and so if you want a fantastic um, neon red pencil grab the Holbein luminous red and then uh, I think I think Holbein also has a pink one I probably have it somewhere in my stash but right now what I have in my little carousel is the um, uh, Prismacolor neon pink uh, which is also cute and then I have from Holbein another color that is really great it's called bright rose or luminous rose I'll have to check um, but it is a little bit like deeper more in the magenta area but it's still quite it's not full-on neon but it is quite bright and I'm all about the bright pinks so uh, those are my favorites and then the rest of the pencils that I tend to use are a mix of brands oh that's another favorite it's ice green from Holbein it's a great color but most of the pencils that I use are from Prismacolor I just find them to be the most pigmented and soft um, and colorful they have really the best colors Holbein comes a very close second but um, I think really Prisma shines with their vibrant colors but I use different brands in everything in pencils in watercolors and gouache I really don't see a reason to be loyal to a single brand unless they were sponsoring me and <laughs> would give me <laughs> their supplies for free <laughs> then I would consider but otherwise I don't think that there's one brand that gets it right all the time and I don't see my, a reason to limit myself uh, when I can have all of my superstars all the time so that's why you'll see my palettes and all of my supplies always have different brands in them now if you want the best black pencil look no further than this oh and you like soft pencils this is Derwent drawing pencil in ivory black I have about four, three or four of these pencils what is lovely about it besides the fact that it's really really black is that they aren't messy like lead pencils it's just like a coloring pencil so uh, I appreciate that and I actually also like it for drawing because you know your hand doesn't get full of um, that pencil lead the white color from Derwent drawing is also good and I really like it for adding uh, little dots on top of darker watercolor areas so you can see so that they really pop because you know if I use it on lighter areas or on the paper it's not really going to show so this is today's process video I hope you enjoyed it the last thing I'm going to do is just add a few of these lines it's a pattern that I have really enjoyed um, adding to my paintings again it just helps to give it some detail without getting that overworked look so thanks again for watching take care and I will see you very soon in another video bye bye